Hey guys, Mike Chen here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Today's my first day in Brazil. Always wanted to come here. Gonna start out the day at the iconic Mercado Municipal for a legendary sandwich. And then walk around, maybe get some fruits. There's a lot of fruits in Brazil I wanna try. And finally checking an item off my food bucket list. Going to an all you can eat Brazilian barbecue. And before hitting, I just wanna give a big thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is something I use every single day. I always make sure it's running on my phone, on my laptops. And I highly recommend that you guys do the same because nowadays everyone's trying to gain access to your digital information from data aggregators who are trying to collect your information to sell to marketing companies to people who are trying to access your data to sell on the black market. You got to protect yourself, especially when you're out and about connecting to random Wi-Fi at airports, cafes. These are usually not secure. They even tell you they're not secure. And these are great opportunities for people to gain access to your digital information. A VPN, it's a virtual private network and what Surfshark VPN does is that it secures your personal information before it goes over the internet so people who you don't want having access to your private info they're not gonna have access to it Surfshark also has something called Surfshark alerts so when someone's trying to gain access to something like your email you will get notified right away also if you love watching movies you love watching TV shows you can actually use Surfshark VPN to change your location to a different country giving you access to that country's video and movie catalog on Netflix or if you're traveling abroad you want access to your US streaming services use Surfshark VPN to switch your location back to the US so you don't miss your favorite movies or TV shows or if you just want normal access to a lot of US major websites because some of these websites don't even function when you're trying to access it from abroad so I use Surfshark VPN to do even basic things like pay my bills and when you turn it on it just runs on the background it's fast and it costs less than a cup of coffee a day so if you want to give it a try go to my link down below using my promo code dumpling you'll get 83% off your order plus three additional months for free and try it out for 30 days if you don't like it for any reason get your money back. All right, let's go get the sandwich. Hey guys, Mike Chen here in the heart of Sao Paulo, Brazil, right in front of the Mercado Municipal. And this structure is as rich in history as it is in flavor. And it has been delighting taste buds since 1933. From fruits you never even heard of to the legendary mortadella sandwich, this market moves around 450 tons of food daily. Luckily, I'm hungry. Let's go eat. There's a lot of food stalls in this market offering that sandwich. This is probably the most famous one. Before the sandwich, I got a Belenio Bacalhau. And this is a traditional Portuguese Brazilian snack. I had this um, when I was in Lisbon. And it's a traditional Portuguese Brazilian snack made with salted codfish. Inside there's potatoes, it's deep fried where the outside is perfectly crispy, inside perfectly soft and tender. Look at this. It's also stuffed with tons of herbs. And they told me to drizzle some olive oil onto this, some lime. Oh, I love this. The outside crunch is subtle, yet remarkable. Inside, mushy potatoes mixed with the cod provides a savory yet unmistakably aromatic bite especially when you drizzle that with some olive oil. It's basically a contrast of crunchy versus soft. And when you put it all together, you just taste the food magic right here. Every single time your teeth meet, you get a bit of that crunchy outer shell. You taste the fish, the potatoes, the olive oil just adds to the aroma of this dish. They have um, chili sauce sitting here as well. Dunk it in that a little bit. Definitely do that. Yeah, these people added a lot of fire in their chili sauce. Oh my gosh, this is such a great combination. And your taste buds will meet at the juncture of savory and spicy, and trust me, they will love it. Mm, that pretty much made my food day already, but this beautiful sandwich just showed up at my table. Look at this. This is one of the most beautiful sandwiches I've ever laid my eyes upon. And if you don't know, mortadella is a large Italian sausage or cold cuts made of ground pork filled with spices and often pistachios. And this is the most iconic food item here in this market. And the Brazilian version of the mortadella sandwich is made with just a skyscraper of thinly sliced mortadella. It's sandwiched between a hot, freshly baked 
French roll with melted cheese on top. And there's different variations of this. You can get this with bacon. I think some comes with lettuce, tomatoes. I just opted for the original. Oh my gosh, this is such a thing of beauty. The roll is toasty on the outside, super pillowy and soft inside. The cheese is just a gooey mess. And just look at how much mortadella they give you. I mean, this is one of those sandwiches where you take one look and ask if it wants some bread with this mortadella. I've been letting this sit for a little bit just, just to admire its beauty. The juice from the mortadella, it's just soaking through the bottom of the bread already. Look at all that. I'm so excited and nervous. If this is a food dream, don't ever wake me up. Wow. Wow. Now, I love a meaty sandwich, especially living in New York where the bodegas would just layer on the meat. This is everything my food loving heart desires. I mean, the mortadella texture is like a mother's kiss. Remarkably gentle and tender. When you bite down on the sandwich, the biggest resistance is just the crust of the bread. After that, it's like your teeth is sinking into a meat cloud. They slice the mortadella paper thin. You can taste the fat, you can see the fat. And mortadella has a distinct flavor that really sets it apart from other cold cuts. It's rich, it's meaty. I think above all, one word I would use to describe the meat, it's just so smooth. Like, melt in your mouth smooth. Again, this is made from very finely ground pork, so you definitely taste how fine that is. Since there's hot sauce here, I'm gonna Add some of this on my sandwich. Yeah, that heat really balances out the richness and the savoriness of the cheese and the meat. This one, it's a lot spicier. Try this. Also, not enough is being said about how delicious this French roll is. It's crusty, pillowy, and soft, and just a perfect vehicle for the sandwich. This sucker is substantial. Come in here, get one of these. You're gonna walk around the market all day. I think just like the ice cream cone, the last bite, this is the best bite. This is where the juice from the meat has all soaked into the bread. Best bite. Oh, that was a fulfilling sandwich. So a couple things about this market. First of all, it's a must see if you ever come to Sao Paulo and you're a food lover. It is very touristy, a lot of vendors are very pushy. So you just gotta be aware of that. I think I'm, at the end of the day, I'm gonna just buy some fruit from the supermarket, take it back to my hotel and try it there. Not a local Brazilian grocery store. I feel like buying food here is probably gonna be a better deal. Oh my gosh, this is a cacao. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Wow, this mango is beautiful. I'm gonna pretend I know what I'm doing when it comes to picking out mangoes. There's so much fruit in this grocery store. I am so excited for this. I love Brazilian barbecue, and I always, always wanted to try here in Brazil. This is gonna be another check off the food bucket list. I am here at Barbacoa, one of the most famous barbecue spots here in Sao Paulo, and here we go. This is so exciting. This buffet is amazing. As soon as you walk inside, I mean, this is such a beautiful restaurant. People are so nice here in the buffet. It's beautiful. All sorts of fresh and cooked veggies, cheeses, meats, seafood. There's seared tuna, there's asparagus, artichoke heart, of palms. Everything's laid out so perfectly. Mushrooms, ham, peppers, chilies, everything you might want to go with your endless meat is pretty much here. And look at the bread basket. I know this is gonna be my, my biggest challenge not to eat all this, but usually at a Brazilian barbecue in the US, you just get the cheese biscuits. Oh, but here there's all sorts of stuff. Mm. This is a Brazilian pastel, basically a pastry stuffed with beef. And this thing is stuffed with beef. I couldn't help but get a lot of stuff from the salad bar. Some octopus salad. Mm. Some mushroom, I think this is tossed in mustard dressing. Mm. Oh, that's freaking amazing. It's vinegary and mustardy. That's gonna go so good with meat. Freshly sliced ham as well. Also, got some tuna. That's delicious. Look at this, artichoke with peppercorn inside. <laughs> I don't know exactly what that was, but it was some sort of delicate smoked fish that disappeared as soon as it touched my tongue. Wow. Also, I got some cheese to dip in my, I think this is some mango jam. 
Mm. Yeah, everything I had on this buffet, it's either flavor perfectly, cooked perfectly, or just the freshest it can be. For the condiments they brought over, there's some pickle, onions, some butter. I got some garlic and peppers on the side. There's some barbecue sauce as well. And what's really interesting is this medallion that starts and stops your meat parade. First time I've ever seen that it's not a piece of cardboard. So let the meat parade begin. First two cuts, I got a lamb rib and a piece of sirloin. And a couple different types of rice. Mmm. Wow. The rice that's more yellow, stewed with little pieces of beef. That is not only delicious, it is spicy. This is like some sort of super spicy fried rice. Wow. And look at how perfectly cooked that lamb is. That juice is just dying to flow out. Nice amount of fat right by the bones. Oh, boom. This is the juiciest, most tender. And again, the juiciest, like a waterfall of juice, juiciest lamb rib I've ever had in my life. This is unbelievable how much juice is in here. Oh my gosh, especially that fattier part right by the bone where it's extra charred. That part is just the best. It's extra charred also is nice and fatty. Holy moly, this is so amazing. They also brought over some fried polenta and fried banana. This is so beautiful. This is the airiest crunch on the outside. Inside, fluffy, soft polenta. The fried banana is amazing as well. The degree to which they fried it is just a master class in cooking. Perfect little crunch on the outside. Inside, you got that sweet, mushy banana. This is so beyond good. The sirloin is lean. Still ridiculously juicy and tender. Beautiful smoky flavor in this cut of beef. Chase it with some raw pickled garlic. This is exactly what I thought my first Brazilian barbecue experience in Brazil would be like. Bite after bite of mind blowing, mind blowing food. Especially this lamb. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. I think that's a chimichurri. Put a little chimichurri on here. Oh, that's even better. I love this place so much. Next meat that came over, it's a, it's a cut of roast. This one's a little dry. It's very tender, but it's dry. Lamb came by again. Literally cut this with my fork, with not much effort. Oh, their chimichurri is so good. It's vinegary, it's fragrant, perfect compliment for the meat. They just brought over a piece of grilled cheese. Oh, this thing has so much char. Pacanha, the best cut of meat at any Brazilian barbecue. Oh my gosh. I've been to a lot of Brazilian barbecues. That is the most melting your mouth piece of pecanha I've ever had. This thing is so beautifully charred. Got that great, great smoky flavor. Of course, that little piece of fat. Mm, the piece with the fat is just the best. They just brought over another cut of pecanha. And this one's a little medallion. Look at this. Oh, look at all that juice. This looks like it's cooked to absolute perfection. Oh my God. The juiciest steak I've ever had at a Brazilian barbecue, hands down. And right now the meat just keeps coming. I got a piece of flank steak here. Mm. It's more lean, but man, this thing is tender and juicy. Mm. It just brought over a blood sausage. Heck to the yes. Mm. Mm. Every single culture seems to have their own version of blood sausage, and I love them all. Snappy casing, rich, rich, rustic flavors. The filling is way smoother, creamier than other blood sausages I've had. Next up, some rib and more picanha. Mm. This is really, really good. Fatty, juicy, perfectly seasoned. This is a super flavorful cut of meat. Mm, Picanha round two. Mm. If it's possible, this thing just keeps getting more and more tender. Oh, 
Yeah. Very good. Very good. They brought over yet another cut of picanha, and this one is cooked rare. And they recommended I get some of the rare pieces. Oh my gosh. I think this might be the most tender cut. Barely need to chew this thing. I mean, the meat and that roasted charred fat at the end is like the beef version of that cherry on top of that cake. The beef rib. I've been into a piece that's basically all fat. I love that. Next up, a piece of pork belly with a piece of crispy toasty skin. Oh, that was a luxurious piece of pork belly. Melts in your mouth, meat and fat, crunchy, airy skin. I got a couple more cuts of beef rib. Oh, I think this one is more tender than the last one. Oh my gosh. This is one of the best cuts. Beef rib, of course, is gonna be tender. This thing is tender, it's fatty, it's smoky. And look at all that juice that's in here. It's like a beef sponge. I think I like this as much as the picanha. Part of that beef rib was just toasty fat, coursing its way through the meat. The quality of beef here is much better than what I've had in the US. Also, this place is really not open all that long. I think for dinner, it's only open from six to 9.30, so three and a half hours. And as soon as they open this place, it's packed. Also, something I just found out about the Brazilian barbecue scene when I got here, the most popular Brazilian barbecue in Brazil Fogo de Chao. Another big difference I noticed between barbecue in the US and Brazil. In the US, at least in my experience, they rarely bring the picanha to you. Here, they do it a lot. It's really hard for me to say no, so I've had a lot of plays of picanha. I think I'm beefed out. I haven't seen any other new cuts of meat floating by me, so two hours in, I'm gonna go ahead and call Mercy. This place has absolutely exceeded my expectations. Not only are the cuts of meat absolutely mind-blowing, and from what my local friends tell me, it's never inconsistent. A lot of times when I go to a Brazilian barbecue in the US, sometimes it's great, sometimes not as good. Here, it's always good. The salad bar is good, the bread is good, the service is great. I couldn't understand the language, so they brought over a chart to show me what each piece is. Service, food, everything here. Spectacular. I think the only thing I didn't try that was floating around is the sausage and the chicken. But yeah, I think I think this wraps up my first and hopefully not my last Brazilian barbecue experience here in Brazil. Just went to the gym feeling a little hungry. Luckily, I still have all the fruit that I got from this morning. Let's start with this, the jabuticaba fruits. So this stuff, it looks like a grape. It's basically known as Brazilian grapes. This fruit is something I've never seen before. And it's also quite rare because it only grows in really tropical climates and it only fruits a few weeks a year. Also, what's really interesting about these fruits, they don't grow on the branches of the trees. They actually grow on the trunk of the tree. So to eat them, you just squeeze it, pop it open, and put it in your mouth. Mm, this is so good. Yeah, this thing pretty much tastes like a grape. It's tart, it's very sweet and juicy. It's got a very fruity flavor. This is amazing. Mm. And this thing is unique because right underneath the skin, the texture is almost like a, like a grape puree. Very, very sweet, but right around the pit, the texture is more fleshy, more like that of a lychee, and it's more sour. This is such a delicious fruit. Definitely give that a try if you are ever in Brazil. Next up, the custard apple. I had this in Singapore and loved it. So you just break this open and just munch on the flesh. Mm, those are all my favorite fruits in the world. These things are very sweet and rich with a fruity aroma. To me, they kind of taste like a combination of a, a pear and an apple and a banana. And some part of this, especially towards the peel, is creamy and custardy. Seriously, one of the best fruits on this planet. This is something that's really, really unique. <laughs> Look at the size of this. So this is a cacao fruit or a cacao pod. And inside are the cacao beans. And to open it, sometimes you can just crack it open. I had to cut into it. And here it is. The fruit on the inside. And look at these. And these pulps are supposed to be really delicious. So what we're supposed to do is suck the pulp around the beans. Mm. Oh wow. Oh, that's really good. It's sweet and tart, very tropical flavor. Kind of reminds me of a mango sting, but not as sweet as a mango sting. And what you can also do is just crunch down on the beans. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. So that's the cacao beans, wow. And it just tastes like 100% really intense dark chocolate with zero sugar. The texture is basically tastes like a nut. Oh, that's so bitter. This pulp is really good. There's not a lot of it though. This is really, really interesting. It's worth a try. Also the vessel that it comes in, that's pretty cool. And finally, a giant mango. Oh, that's so good. I didn't know this, but there's actually tons of varieties of mangoes and a lot of them taste distinctively different. This one is really sweet and tart and juicy. I think this is a Palmer mango, which originated in Florida. Oh, and one other fruit I tried here in Brazil that I never had before was the cashew fruit. I talked about it in a separate video. I couldn't find it at the grocery store today. That's one of the best fruits you'll ever taste. It's very fleshy and super juicy and sweet. Anyway, Brazil, tons of exotic fruits, many that I've never seen before. So if you are ever here, go get yourself some barbecue, but don't forget about the fruit. And of course, all the places I went to listed down below for you guys. Thank y'all so much for watching. Till we eat again, see you later.